politics We don't get no kicks Trinidad and Tobago to we have this thing up to fix We come in with facts Cut them down like acts Every kid and race find an equal place is love to the max And when we tell them a nail Do club politics This is do club politics Yeah Do club politics This is do club politics Yeah Do club politics Good evening and welcome to Dogla Politics. Shamfa Kujo and Brian Lewis, y'all calling or y'all are saying that you too are going to rally around our athletes at the Olympic Games and you're calling on us to rally around. Yes, we can rally. We are the fans, we are the supporters, we are the patriots, we love our athletes. We could rally and send prayers and so on. But Shampa Kujo and Brian Lewis, all your work is not a rally. All your work was to prepare the athletes to perform. All your work was to make sure they get vaccine early in January, February, so they could get out there and compete, so they could get out there and train. All your job was to make sure they get enough funding and go in the cabinet over the last six years and make sure you get the budget back up to where Anil had it at 140 million and don't cut it down to 10 million. Brian Lewis, you were supposed to advocate for the for the funds for the athletes, take care of them, get their coaches paid, get their trainers paid for the physiotherapy, pay for their surgery, for the injuries, get them better equipment, better uniforms, like how I got javelins for Keshon in 2012. That was your work. You are not a rally. You are to do your work, Shampa Kujo and Brian Lewis. So leave the rally in for we now the fans. We go rally them, we go support them, right? But all you was to do your work. Both all you need to resign one time. Because listen to this. This is my former female football captain who was one oomph away from taking Trinidad and Tobago to the World Cup for the first time. Mailey Atten Johnson, a woman who will put blood, sweat, and tears, get injured playing for Trinidad and Tobago, play injured, fight, train, push herself, push her troops. Listen to what Mailey Atten, leave it up, man. Let me read it, man. Mailey Atten Johnson posted yesterday Thank you to all our athletes who always put our country first. Thank you to all our athletes who represent our country with pride and joy. Thank you to all our athletes who give their heart and soul for our country in these uncertain times. I salute you, says Mailey Atten Johnson. These athletes were not only fighting against a pandemic, but they were also fighting against poor administration, lack of resources, but mostly import, most importantly, against a government who does not care about sports. While we treat sports as a pastime, the entire world treats it as an investment. Not until the heads that understand the true power and benefits of sport, it's only then we will start competing consistently with the best of them. Invest in sport. So mainly Atin Johnson understand Shamfa Kujo and Brian Lewis, your work was not to rally and clap. Your work was to fight for athletes, get resources, get the training, get the science, get the methods, get the competition, get the vaccines, get them out there, get them to train during the pandemic, get the government to allow the athletes to train and move. That was all your work. Not to come now and ball hey, let me rally. All you is not cheerleaders if all you want to pump pum. I will give all you to pump pum. Guardian newspaper. Wednesday, August 4th. I'm going to read to you what the Guardian newspaper is saying. TNT must give athletes strong platform too. Talking about the success of Jamaica and so on and so forth. They come down in about the fifth paragraph. Here the Guardian newspaper. The politicians and sporting bodies alike too often offer only lip service to what's providing the programs and facilities athletes need to prepare themselves for the big stages. Indeed, there are no real definitive plans and follow-up, with one of the critical elements being a lack of soliciting private sector partnership for a solid sporting plan. 
that will benefit all stakeholders, since government alone cannot do what is needed. So, the Guardian is trying to say, across the board, UNC, PNM, same thing, no investment in sport. The problem, Guardian, is that when you're so myopic and you've got Balize juice all up in your k packs when you're writing your stories with a PNM golden pen and all you can see is PNM, you don't know what existed because all that mattered to you over the last six years is that PNM and Rowley must win because your shareholders needed Rowley to procure without procurement to make themselves richer and get billions. You didn't care about sport, you didn't care about country, you didn't care about policy. Let me give you a clear example because for you to write that drivel it means that you didn't understand what was taking part what was taking place in sport under Kamala Pasad Bissessa so I'm going to have to remind you right first of all Anil Roberts was the minister of sport Anil Roberts is the highest qualified coach in the Western Hemisphere level 5 senior World Swim Coaches Association World Amateur American Swim Coaches Association Masters spent 40 years in sport is a former national athlete in swimming and under 19 football got a football scholarship and loves all sports and sport passionate sport media sport everything so number one there's Anil and then there's Shamfa so that's us that's the start these, that's, that's a chamfer now. Chamfer is looking better since she became Minister of Sport. The top picture is pre-sport and the bottom picture is post-sport. So I'm happy with that for chamfer. But sport was in a total mess. So they started with that. And those, put back that map there. That map, that was grounds that were done by Anil Roberts and Kamala Pasad Bissessa across Trinidad and Tobago with proper running track, walking track, proper drainage, proper grass, Bermuda grass, car, car, stands with, with training session, computer room, uh, audiovisual room for coaches to go through video footage with athletes and so on. That's what Anil did. Shamfa and the PNM have done nothing. Rowley put one ground down in Dago Martin and lock it up from the people because he partner he just play golf with. This is sham for completed grounds. So please, Guardian, when you're talking, don't talk now because you put Rowley in charge and you eliminated Children's Life Fund, education, gate, roads, investment, foreign direct investment, for, foreign exchange, business, sport, tourism, you elim and sport. You didn't care. You just wanted Rowley. So don't put everything in place. Let me show you what was there and what the PNM under Rowley by putting this lady and this lady, when she was made Minister of Sport, she posted that when your own dog bites you, you're well bitten. She don't even want to be the Minister of Sport. So that alone should show you where we are, Guardian, but you all didn't realize that because you only write and record and, re and recall and remember what PNM is in charge. So it's only PNM who must govern this country because when there are other governments, you write a set of nonsense and pretend the other governments don't exist. Number two, infrastructure. Kamla Pasad Bissessa, Velodrome, Aquatic Center, Tennis Se Center, 89 grounds, 14 other regional grounds across the board, Irwin Park, Sangri Grandi, all over big grounds done. Growth poles, Kamla Pasad Bissessa got the sport into the, into the business end of the budget in the first 16 minutes. Uh, former Minister of Finance would put Larry Hawaii talked about sport being growth pole in Coover. So they had the uh, cricket center, they had the Arto Bolden Stadium, Kamla Pasad, the Cessa put the aquatic center, the cycling village was coming with BMX to be a growth pole so that businesses, malls, offices, health centers, restaurants would have set up there while we people, all of we people, the children use the facility, good coaching, and people would have come to exercise and it would have been a growth pole for investment in that area. But they stop all that and the PNM lock it after even the citizens they cannot even exercise there now you see guardian you don't write the truth because your job is not to print the truth and write the truth you just like to talk shopping or correcting the record here on dogla politics sport tourism 
when those facilities were built, we also left Kamla and Annie left a plan there approved by cabinet for the opening of the aquatic center for George Bovell to swim 100,000 US cash, bring the 16 fastest or 15 fastest other than George to go match sprint racing, to be on ESPN live on BBC Sport, Fox Sports and so on, to open that, to show the world the facility that we had, the tennis center. We could not afford Serena Williams to come down, so we were getting McEnroe and Ackers, see the older fellas with Pete Sampras to come and play and do cut clinics and so on and fill out the tennis court area and beam it live on ESPN, BBC Sport, Fox Sport, internationally, all over the world to show people what we had. We were also going to make all of our athletes who are out there at universities across the USA, Canada and Europe. We are going to make them sport ambassadors, paying them a stipend every month for them to promote Trinidad and Tobago as a sports tourism destination and every package of teams that they got they would get a percentage also of revenue so they could earn money too to aid them in their sporting activities and moving forward so the country would benefit from their expertise and we would get every 10,000 people that we would get here annually would add 500 million dollars to the GDP of Trinidad and Tobago once we got them here to spend at least eight days seven nights and uh seven nights eight days okay that's the planning that was there pnm come and put this and you're all talking about unc and pnm is the same i'm taking my time and i'm sweating tobago tobago was going to be a sporting hub there were going to be festivals of sport. There was going to be a sun festival of sport, including surfing, wind sailing, kite surfing, uh, uh, fishing, all of these parasailing in April when the breeze is strong in Tobago and so on and bring people in. And then in, the, in September, October, November, around there, Tobago would have been a place for training camps also for all other sports, including professional sports. The uh, Dwight York Stadium had already been refurbished for the track, another 120 million was approved to do the infrastructure underneath sports science centers two of them were to be designed where our doctors and our sports scientists could do research do analysis and keep records of all our elite athletes all coaches could go there for education in the planning and periodization of their workouts across the board and continue the coach education coach international and local coaches would have been and the education and certification increased and coach education coaches would have been given scholarships to go and educate themselves whether online or actually going rural coaching caravan was going on where coaches who have the expertise were going out looking for talent and sharing knowledge with coaches in the rural areas who would get talent and develop it coaches in primary school were we were in the process of putting qualified coaches in every single primary school to prepare athletes at the early level physical preparation moving forward and so on access to facilities Kamla Pasad Bisesa and the partnership government said all facilities belong to the people die for the people by the people therefore no charging no lock gate no nothing Rowley and them come lock up all the gate no access nothing to play secondary school football you have to pay to use your own football stadium and so on okay guardian so sport was on the right track but you put Rowley and Senri right back funding Anil got the funding, went in a cabinet with 32 other ministers and argued and got the funding in the NPI vote, which includes Olympic preparation, elite athlete, junior elite athlete, uh, medical help for the athletes, like any athletes that needed surgery and so on, or even the, our cricketers like Sunil Narayan and Cooper who needed to adjust their thing down in Australia. Anil and Kamala, the government pay for them to do that and move them on because they promote the country and that the country is there for them. That's what we did and continued. So 140 million a year also in, in funding for the 49 NSOs to share up. Not enough for everybody, still needed more. But how much this PNM under Rowley and Champa this? From 140 million annually down to 10 million. And what did Brian Lewis say? Anything? No, he went and screened for PNM. So that's okay. And you all say that this man screened for PNM. PNM still spit him out. And he get under camera 140 million per year for sport. That wasn't good. He preferred the 10 million because he's a PNM. 
And you're all talking about sport, this and nothing, no plans, because there are no plans under the PNM. The only plan is to look better. Look, she looking better. I give her. <laughs> Shanfa, you really, girl, you really look better. I ain't, I, you, dog like a lie. The Spirit of Sport Awards. Under Kamala, you had a Spirit of Sport Awards which the athletes used to look forward for to reward them for their performances. Athletes, coaches, grassroots at coaches, young coaches, junior coaches, team coaches, best media picture, best media coverage, all aspects of the sport industry in the Spirit of Sport Awards. PNM cut that and throw it away. Uh, CARICOM Training Center. There was a plan here for Trinidad to be a CARICOM Training Center for all sports where all Caribbean athletes come. They get the sports science, they get the VO2 max, they get the testing, they get the training. They're in the best facilities. We have the best coaches. We put them in the hotels. The governments of the other CARICOM islands pay for them to be here. An elite training center was here. All of that was in the works. All of that stopped by the PNM. Sport rewards and marketing. We also had talent identification scouts to go out into the communities. Don't mind I go sweat because sporters get passionate. To go out in the communities, look for talent, find it, and put them into the pathways, into the coaches, whatever sport. If they generally track and field, swimming, gymnastics, archery. We also had international a cabinet note to bring in coaches from China. All they want to do everything with China except do what China does best. Diving, synchronized swimming, archery. We had a cabinet note approved to get coaches from there. All now, the aquatic center finished and opened. Not a child has dived or learned to dive there. The best facilities in the Western Hemisphere. But PNM don't use it anyway. Sport management professionals, Kamla and, the, and Anil and the, and the UNC were going to put sports management professionals in every sporting organization to help them manage and move their funds to stop wasting their money and put it in the right path and develop uh, plans and, and, and develop five-year development and strategic plans, help them in the marketing, help them to attract private sector sponsorship also. All of that cat spraddle under the PNM. Grassroots funding, equipment, uniforms across the board, sports days, little community groups, that funding was flowing. When Marlene McDonald asked me a question in the parliament back in 2012, I take 45 minutes to answer. Groups from Shagarama straight up to Toko, Sangri Grandi, Matlot, Dong in Kuva, Penal, Barakpo, all down in Point 14, Labre, across the board, Mayaro, sporting groups from all over getting equipment and having medals, trophies, tents, and so on to encourage sport. We were going also to have a regional corporation games. The 14 regional corporations and the THA would have had their own games on, with several sports, netball, football, cricket, track and field, basketball, swimming, and they would have come together like an Olympics, a local Olympics, and then all the coaches would have been able to spot talent. This was also going to be done with the primary schools and we were going to separate the primary schools under 14. Imagine you have under 14 football in primary school. When I was 15, I take O-levels. We had to separate that and identify talent, put coaches in place. We were going, we were funding the Pro League and the Super League. 11 million, them cut that down to 2 million. Pro League couldn't even have a full season in the last 4 or 5 years. Kamala Pasad Bicessa was pumping money into football, Super League, Pro League, while the Secondary Schools League did not have to find money to rent stadium. The Ministry of Sport grassroots football program was there. Cabinet note approved this at PMCD to hire coaches across the country in order to have a, a technical director, coaches, uh, physiotherapists, sports psychologists, all in all areas, boys and girls football to unearth talent from every nook and cranny and then link it to the TTFA that is there approved sitting down there but this PNM do nothing guardian so when you're writing this you must read this and write and stop talking nonsense because elections have consequences we were going to have a professional netball league built six indoor air conditioned courts because netball we were world championship world champions in 1977 we were world champions and now we're not even in the top nine in the world so we needed to get talent to allow our professionals our girls to stop working and training it's too much to go and battle those other girls who just play netball 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 and then we expect them to go and beat australia and scotland and this and these big sides like south africa australia new zealand no we needed a professional league that would be funded and the pro private sector would have been encouraged to come in in the professional netball league. Where the PNM? Eh? 
pay them don't even know what I am talking about. He questioned for the differently abled. Differently abled, we were involving and sponsoring horses and horse treatment and therapy for that. And they were also getting involved in Paralympic and Special Olympic. We were going to build a special home for sport for Special Olympians and Paralympians to train and have their own home where they could be respected and focus on their training, their scientific planning, and their performance at the international level to bring glory to Trinidad and Tobago. All of that was there. And you all come and put PNM, Rowley, and Rowley put this. And now you're trying to equivocate between UNC and PNM. Only give me a chance, eh? I'm gonna drink some water and I come back. That segment went longer than I thought. But I, 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 you know, it's really disgusting. The newspapers in this country all have no shame. Y'all give us PNM, y'all give us Rowley, y'all give us small pin, y'all give us Champa. Old champa, good looking champa, useless to sport, nothing going on, no ideas, no concept, no passion, no knowledge, nothing, no money, not even respect to go in the cabinet to get anything. And then y'all are talking about, oh well, there's nothing going on in sport. There's nothing going on in sport, Guardian. Because you put Rowley and Rowley put that, and the PNM don't care about sport, they don't care about the athletes, they send them out in the world to be beaten and battered, and then they want to criticize them. We love the athletes. But when you love something, you have to show your care by pumping resources, pumping investment, showing the athletes that you care about them, and that's what Kamala was doing. Or you come and put this. Look like my girl water, yes? Bless. PNM. PNM. Yeah! This one is for the nation, for the children. Yeah. We're getting it done. In the fires of hope and prayer Together as one There is no load we cannot bear And I see the light At the end of the rainbow And I see the bright blue skies Tomorrow has come And the change has begun Yes we move and Yes, we moving. Here we come. Hey. Getting it done. But let me tell you something. For what is how we moving? So never stop believing. We get Yes, you're getting it done. Maybe Felicia Chow could have rode there and practiced there. Maybe George Bovell could have made a comeback by worst human being ever to sit in the office of the Prime Minister. Don't care about nothing. Nothing working. But you're all still trying to tell us. Listen to him. Let's worship him. You're just to tell you after floods now. Dipti and Arjun talks needed on COVID-19 food prices. Supermarkets Association President Economist Valmiki Arjun also said that there should be a discussion about how to strengthen deficiencies in local food production. Here how to strengthen deficiencies in local food production. Get rid of Clarence. Tell Clarence stop liming with Budit every night and just focus on getting more places to, to be uh, under cultivation, get more funding, get the 500 million to the farmers so they could grow food to fund us. Go and get all the Karani land. In fact, just get rid of Clarence. Clarence, we'll get rid of you so you and Budit can have extra time together. Okay, Clarence? On top of that, while food prices is going up and we cannot feed ourselves, the world imported food going up. Put up the image. Look at that. This is increasing imported items between December 2020 and July 2021. Look at the items that went up and look at the increases in all of that across the board. And this happened while simultaneously during that period, over 120,000 people lost jobs. Over 120,000 people lost jobs. So there's less money in the system. There's less economic activity, but food prices going up. That is stagflation. Do you know how stupid you have to be to have stagflation in an economy? Because of the forex crunch, the, uh, the unavailability of U.S. items, the, the competitive nature, prices are going up, people are starving. But all they want to say, PNM, UNC, same thing. When Kamala was there, they didn't even have VAT on 7,000 food items. That alone, 
Everybody should vote Kamala. So how come we voted to pay 12.5% more on 7,000 items? How come we voted to lose our jobs? How come we voted to have no investment in sport? How come we voted for flood? How come we voted for cutting gate? How come we voted for this? Very interesting. And while this is going on, Rudy Indasing had to be fighting to save farmers from being evicted by PNM. So food prices going up. Clarence Rambarat can't open me mouth to tell nobody in the cabinet nothing because he lost in Mayaro, he lost in Chagonasis, he's a loser extraordinaire. The only thing he had lost is booted number to go by Copacabana. But understand this, that this man, this PNM under Clarence Rambarat and the PNM breaking down farmers, breaking down, in Rudy Indasing says he's going to get lawyers to seek an injunction to stop ETEC from breaking down farmers, people who are growing food for us to eat in a pandemic. That is PNM. They not only want to put AstroTurf on grass, but them breaking down farmers. When you're talking, elections have consequences. The first thing Kamala Prasad Bissa said, you could move that food price, pain day, but it have more pain coming because all PNM brings is pain. The first thing Kamala Prasad Bissa said, cabinet note one, was create a life fund to save children's life. Now let that soak in a little bit. Eh? Soak that in. Because a lot of you all like to believe the nonsense being spewed by the mass media and PNM about Kamala this and Kamala can win. And can. Let me tell you something. The very first note. What was Rowley's first note? Shut down petrol train and stop um, this and put the brethren on them. What was his first note? To put Noel Garcia in front, in charge of all, all your money to spend. What was his first note? To put your own personal lawyer in charge of heritage and shut down petrol train. What was his first cabinet note? To procure without procurement, to gut the procurement, to approve Bridgman's with prime ministerial approval and then go to cabinet for covering. Which one was his first one? And please, while you're thinking, tell me something, some note, some cabinet note that Rowley took that said, ah, that could help poor people. Please name one. Because Kamala also went with baby milk grant. She went with differently able incre increasing the funding and, and paying for them to go to school. Rowley take away all of that. She increased school feeding. She increased gate. She increased everything to help single mothers. She increased across the board. She created 55,000 jobs. But note number one that Kamala Prasad Bissessa brought to save children's life. And since PNM reached, and on top of that, she took out, first thing she did was take out 10% of she salary and put it every single month. If she was prime minister for 67 months, she put 10% of her salary into the children's life fund for every single month. And we as ministers, for every single month, that we were ministers, we put 5% of our salary into the Children's Life Fund to save children's lives. What Rowley did, I'm listening to you all, I really want to know. And on top of cutting funding and Rowley and his ministers not putting anything in the Children's Life Fund, let me read from page 7 of The Guardian, Thursday, August 5th. Mother believes two-month-old son's death could have been avoided. No help from Children's Life Fund. A mother has been left to grieve the loss of a son, whom she believes would have still been alive had she received state help so he could get the emergency treatment he needed. Stacy Ann Assing said two-month-old Caden Charles was expected to undergo surgery abroad but the family could not access money from the Children's Life Fund. Asing yesterday agonizingly held on to this death, can I read that? A death certificate of a baby. Kamala Prasad Bissetsa in five years and seven months saved over 175 children's life, giving them up to one million each for life-saving surgery. How many lives Rowley and his children life fund saved in six years? The last report I got was eight. But the rejections have reached over 300 rejected children. You all go and check it for yourself. 
right? So when all they're talking about this lady, all they talk the truth because her performance is there on paper, cabinet note. 10% salary, all of that, these are facts, not emotion, not gya gya gya. So be very careful. Look what Rowley does. Mayor, I didn't expect a barrage of negativity over AstroTurf. PNM Mayor of Port of Spain, Joel Martinez, he said, the idea came as a proposal from a private developer a couple of years ago. Well, you see, Martinez, you sell out Rowley. Because Anil and the Douglas politics, we show all you in our show. And if we good, we go show all you right now that this project was tendered out in 2017. And I went through to explain to y'all that a mayor and a corporation can't tend out no project for no $20 million without cabinet approval. Because for a corporation to tend out a project like that, they have to get cabinet approval they have to go to the cabinet through the local government ministry the local government minister will take the note to cabinet about the project they would have details and so on the cabinet will look at it send it f and gp check and see the veracity if it makes sense and so on when they see that it makes sense they put it back on a blue paper send it back to cabinet cabinet will discuss it again they will approve it then the next week they will come and it will be on a pink sheet they will confirm the minute and then it will go to the minister ministry of local government and ministry of finance and the corporation that is going to tender out to say yes cabinet has approved you can move forward and tender out so if a project was tendered out in 2017 i put it to you that the cabinet knew about it discussed it and approved it i put it to you that keith rowley is the chairman of the cabinet I put it to you that therefore Keith Rowley approved the stupid astroturf that he now says dotishness. I put it to you that the PNM does lie every time they open their mouth. Senator Vera, put up a picture of independent Senator Vera there for me. You know, because they are, I mean, they are independent, these are independent senators. I remember the PNM started this, 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 this concept of independent PNM senators, right? Helen Drayton. Every contribution she make attack Kamala in the most vile way in the Senate. And as Kamala, excuse me, as Kamala lost, Helen Drayton jump out. PNM board, chairman of, of CNMG, PNM, PNM, PNM. Now she's PNM chair, chairwoman of, NIP, of um, NIB under the PNM, but she was as an independent senator, they have an next one called Small, independent senator, swear on the Bible, I'm independent, I'm independent. And then jump out on a PNM Nikwan company that blowing up people down in there and losing all, all your money. Them is independent. Well, let me talk to this one here, this independent senator who attacked me, saying that I, Anil Roberts, who suffering with asthma diagnosed since seven years old, who went in extra to competitive swimming to eliminate the asthma. My three children that are brought into this world from my sack have asthma, unfortunately. We spend cumulatively lots of money on different preventative measures. I use Symbicot as prescribed by Dr. Trotman and it's very debilitating, and the Sahara dust and COVID-19 threat with asthma. This man, without knowing anything about Anil Roberts, without reading my medical records, without understanding anything, say that I didn't go in the Senate and duck a committee of privileges thing as a plan to pervert the course of justice or pervert the process. This man imputed improper motive on me without knowing nothing about me. I give him about six weeks, he refused to apologize, so no big thing. I don't want no apology. But let me just continue to show what an idiot he is. Let me read for you, Senator Vera, you independent. Yes, man. Independent Senator Vera. Let me read to you from the Newsday. You should like the Newsday. Judy Raymond is the editor of the Newsday. You should like that. Um, page 10. Wednesday, August 4, 2021. Asthmatics need to take COVID-19 seriously. 
pulmonologist for the North Central Regional Health Authority, NCRHA, Dr. Sana Mohammed says, people with asthma and other chronic lung disorders are more at risk of contracting the COVID-19 virus. During the Ministry of Health's press conference on Wednesday, she said it is crucial for those with asthma to protect themselves against the virus. Ensure your asthma is under control. Follow all guidelines, and one of the most important recommendations is to get the COVID-19 vaccine when it is available to you. Well, Dr. Sana, it's not available because my doctor has recommended Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, and lately from studies coming out, Sputnik. Okay? She has not recommended AstraZeneca, no Sinopharm as yet. So it's not available. So I have to keep myself very quiet because the PNM has not made vaccines available for us chronic asthmatics who would like to take the vaccine. But this clung here telling me in the Senate that I, he imputing improper motives on my medical condition of chronic asthma detailed by hospitalization for different specialists and a daily dose of preventative medicine called Symbicort before it was Foradil and, and Milfonide with Ventolin with Primatine missed back in the 80s and 90s which has now moved to a different um, side, I forget the name of it that my little daughter have to take, imagine six going on seven months, she had to take that, okay? But this man say, I faking asthma to miss out going before PNM Committee of Privileges with a PNM and a PNM and a PNM. I don't care about PNM, boy. You really feel I care about Rowley, about small pin, about a Rowley, the tight pants, about the, the makeup wearing crew, the mascara. I don't even care about you. Y'all are suffering in this country. So you could stand there and go on and stand and attack me. Don't apologize. But it's all right. Me here looking for friend. Not at all. But let me continue. If you or your loved one has asthma or any respiratory illness, I would urge you to get vaccinated against COVID-19. She said people who frequently visit or care for others with respiratory illnesses should also take the vaccine. Mohammed said chronic lung diseases are very common. We each know someone personally with asthma. Okay, Mr. Man, but don't apologize. You are such a good man. You are great. I worship your integrity, your class. You know, I don't, you wouldn't, you, you are so, oh my goodness. You're so high up in society. You know that um, if you did wrong and you accuse someone wrongfully, I'm certain that you were taught that you should apologize. But it's clear you're not. So you go and swear on your Bible, Mr. Independent Senator Vera. Get him out of there now. Movie. Right. From <laughs> PNM, elections have consequences. Watch consequences. Flood flu fury. Debris, trash, and mud. This is after I tell all you, Rohan and them is a total waste. Rohan Bolly spent a hundred million. A hundred million on what, Rohan? Rohan, all you sick boy. What are you going to do with all them people? 100 million to deal with floods. By Shaliza Hassan Ali, May 23rd, 2020. Where the 100 million gone, Rohan? Where the flood relief gone? One little bit of rain, and then it have called me, but the eternal meteorologist, back in 2009 when Maraval had flood, or it, it was, yeah, 2009, Diego Martin flood, Maraval flood, call me, but tell us about one cloud. I was on radio with Sprang Alan and Chris then that there was one cloud and it just stayed over Maraval and it just dumped water and then the lightning, the lightning hit up and there was a landslide because the lightning hit the mountain. Call me, but Santa give me a whole scientific analysis of his incompetence back then. You know, call me, but come back this time again and say, yeah, well, it was really a barrage. A bar Look, run the video, yes? Now, yeah, just run the video. Look at PNM. An aggressive start to the rainy season still on schedule. The ministry has ramped up its efforts to ensure that the impact is mitigated. 
And we have, again, uh, embarked on an adventurous program for the Silicon where we have over, uh, we have close to 400 projects in total. We actually restarted the program about three weeks ago and it's ongoing and we are on course to finish the program, you know, well before the height of the rainy season. The Silting Works account for roughly 60 million of the overall budget. Silt from persons building illegally on the river bank and cutting away the vegetation on the hillside. This is what Minister of Works and Transport Rohan Sinanan says contributed to the flooding in the St. Anne's and Maraval areas on Tuesday. He adds that his ministry is moving to stop the illegal construction. We are trying to get permission for our drainage division to enforce some of these rules. Um, we are working with the Ministry of Public Utilities that uh, has the under the, the WASA Act, I think it is, has the authority to deal with these people and also the regional corporation. We are trying to get that enforcement also in the hands of the Ministry of Works Drainage Division. And I can tell you, once we get that, that authority there, we will be taking serious action. Minister Sinanan says, though, the squatting was only part of the reason for the floods. He describes Tuesday's rainfall as abnormal. We didn't like any more damage to happen here. If this pool was to fall down, you know, God, God alone knows what will happen. She claims she has not yet seen any representative for the area. Both Reese Kelly and O'Neill believe the extent of what occurred on Tuesday was preventable. I saw the minister yesterday saying that there's nothing we could have done. No, we could have done better. He could have done better. We could have tried to clear the drains. We could have. We know what this is. This is rain. This is water. We know what this is. It's not that we couldn't done better. We could have done better. We we just didn't do anything. And doing nothing is not an option anymore. That lady just put it in a nutshell. And he now, six years after, who oh, he would like to get the power of the drainage division. And then if he get that power, he would take serious action. And when is that three, to three years down the line? Look, 2008, Embot was talking the same stupidness. PNM just come in and do nothing. Nothing. Spend 100 million doing what? You're in the silt, the river mouth, you do nothing. Hey, hey, go back to Embot. Go back to Embot day. Yesterday, Maraval was the victim of a freak storm. He has always turned meteorologist, which deposited torrential rain in a localized area from massive stores. Go ahead. You see the same? I tell all you, back in 2008, or Embert say it, it was one cloud that didn't move and it dumped water in one area. Look what he's saying now in 2021. 13 years later, he using the same story. The only thing now is now it had tweet. Back then it just had sent out press release on paper. It deposited torrential rain in a localized area from massive stores going north. Amazingly, Upper Maraval was bone dry. As MP, I was out last night to survey. What about all your MPs and the minister works and every time it flood in, in Chaguanas, in Kuva, in South, in Barakpur, in Penal. Where all your ministers just be? Where the prime ministers would be when storm come into the South and he just go to Tobago? But you all feel elections have no consequences. This flooding did not occur. When it occurred the first time, as Kamala Prasad Bissessa saw in as Prime Minister, she put on her boots and she visited the areas on the ground all across Trinidad and Tobago, made sure that people got relief immediately. Then she told each and every cabinet minister from works to wasa to drink to transport to dunk to um, local government all the corporations she called them in and put in an emergency action plan with the odpm and got the drainage done drainage cleared the silting done annually and you did not see that problem pnm come and after six years once it drizzle that will happen and they keep coming to tell you yeah 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 we coming to take it serious just now oh let's keep going with that 
Guardian, you print that. Express print that. Judy Raymond, tell me how good that is. How much sense call make with this one cloud that comes every 13 years just to humbug he and flood he place. Trinidad and Tobago needs a comprehensive disaster management plan. Let's see who is saying this. Much like the work done by the Office of Disaster Preparedness, ODPM in Trinidad, preparation for disasters in Tobago is undertaken by the Tobago Emergency Management. Director of TEMA, Alan Stewart, says that Trinidad and Tobago needs a, a disaster, comprehensive disaster management plan. There was a comprehensive disaster management plan in place from 2010 June, well completed in about September. Between June to September, it was prepared, cabinet note, and operationalized through the ODPM, the Corporations, Ministry of Local Government, Works and Transport across the board. When Dago Martin was hit with floods, immediately all five ministers under Kamala Prasad B. Sessa were on the ground and got relief to the people immediately. PNM was bullied. Oh, you're getting to relief so far, so much money. Why you spend so much money on people, you know? How much what them do? Them left for later to clean up your own thing and tell you, well, you, you wouldn't get locked up for curfew while you're digging out mud. That's the, the care. Yes, the PNM cares for you. Clean up continues after flood. All you think elections have no consequences? I tell all about sport. I tell all about flooding. I tell all about health. I tell all about anything. Now look. Verge of collapse. The economy and business retail sector is at the verge of collapse. Right? Don't think I'm making it up. 20% of retailers shut doors permanently. Excellent stores. Fairs, it is next. No good reason for government sanctions. All you have thing, play, put it up now. Put up all. Yeah, there is a video you have to show. Let me tell you something. Economic devastation from stupidity is the PNM way. Rowley is not a failure by one thing or two things. Rowley is a complete all wrong. That's a failure. Whether it's in sport, whether it's in infrastructure development, whether it is in education, whether it's in children, in the medical fraternity, medical society, medical health facilities across the board, people centered, job creation, nothing working, no foreign exchange, no nothing. And now with this COVID 19, we are dying. Over 1,100 deaths, and our economy is totally shattered. So that man failed on both levels. That is a complete dance. Over 44% of businesses will never reopen. Run it. Gas prices are down, gas production is down. And that is the major source of foreign exchange for the government, which we put back into the commercial banking system. So, problems with foreign exchange, problems with revenue, so we have to borrow. In order to stimulate growth, we must spend. There's a lot of talk outside of there, don't spend. But if you don't spend, you suppress the economy, you crash the economy. How do we spend? We have to borrow. We have no choice. We have to borrow money, we have to dip into the Heritage and Stabilization Fund. So that is what the virus has done to our economy. It has suppressed activity, it has shot a, lot of, shot a lot of activity down, and it has caused us to increase the public debt, and it has caused us to go into the Heritage Fund. But we have absolutely no choice as a country. I sit in the Ministry of Finance and I hear all sorts of things outside of there. I hear advice that we should reduce expenditure to match our income. If we were to do that, you're talking 15, 20 billion dollars cut. You know what a 15 billion dollar cut would do to our economy, Prime Minister? Thousands of people would lose their jobs. Thousands of businesses would close down. So I'm, I can't follow that advice. When people say, cut your expenditure to match your income, I can't do that. Others say, don't borrow. Well, if we don't borrow, where's the money going to come from?
So he borrowed money. He spent out all his savings, 23 billion gone. Debt to GDP ratio, according to him, 92%. But according to the truth, probably around 99 to 100%. And all businesses shutting down. Economy shattered. Place in a complete mess. Downgrade in, in rating. Yes, it was downgraded from stable to negative. Where the money gone? What has he done? He didn't take advice. He did his own thing. Four years ago, the economy is booming, Madam Speaker. Every time Curtis Williams had to show you in the Business Guardian, giving wrong statistics, lying. But now you know. And there are much more than that in that list, you know, businesses that are shut down and will never open up again. And he said that he borrowed. He borrowed for you to pay back, for your children to pay back. And what good did it do? Because just again, another theme of this show, every sector, the PNM is in a mess. The PNM is a disgrace. They're totally incompetent. I said, we're talking about incompetence. I, I, I am, there's a deafening silence. Keith Rowley made an Emancipation Day statement. That's Coco Reef also. Coco Reef said I'm shutting down. Till further notice, Coco Reef, one of the best hotels in Tobago. Emancipation Day. Rowley makes a statement that could only be described as asinine, disgusting, disgraceful, insensitive, wicked, malicious, trying to compare the transatlantic slave trade to other kinds of slavery and so on. Brother David Mohammed came out immediately and slammed Rowley. I ain't hear nothing. No columnist, no front page, no newspaper, no TV6, no CNC3, no TTT, no Natalie Lagor, nothing. Could you all imagine for a moment if Kamala Passad Bissessa had put God out, she thought, and went insane like Rowley for a moment and wrote that stupidness on Emancipation Day? What would have taken place in this country? What would have taken place? Could y'all believe? Look at what Brother Muhammad said. It is absolutely shameful, outrageous, and embarrassing for any black man on em Emancipation Day to say that every people, every race has experienced some history of slavery. The enslavement that Africans endured was a dehumanizing, genocidal, mass murder that involved arbitrary executions, torture, trauma, rape, and destruction of our families. And Keith Rowley said, well, everybody went through that. And the country, my country, quiet. Kamala make a speech, say blank 33 times. And all you say, she said black once. The only thing you can say about he is outside he look black, but inside white like penta paint. And the place went wild. Racism, race. A man with a raster, take off a yellow jersey. And Bola can't take that race thing. All you're giving people banana. Yes, really? But here comes the most disgraceful, disgusting statement and message on Emancipation Day by a Prime Minister. And I only hear Brother Muhammad and now I hear, Are you guru, me? Two people, two black brothers only. When Rowley is talking about a shame to be descendants of Africans. The people look upon us not as descendants of African slaves, but as great innovators and so on. So what's wrong with them looking at us as descendants of African slaves? It should be a badge of honor, pride, joy, and strength. To come from your forefathers who were enslaved, brutalized, and yet we rise from that. And we uplift their spirit and their soul and show them, thank you. We are grateful for the sacrifices that you all went through that we can now thrive. It is a source of pride to be a, a descendant of a slave. Rowley says a shame. And the whole world, the whole are not quiet. Only don't find something wrong with our society. Only really don't find so. 
But somebody do I add a wrong election with somebody who didn't even look Indian, giving somebody else who didn't even look African, banana. And banana is the number one food in the whole world. Are all them elite athletes that run in the Olympics? Banana. As soon as they run, banana is number one. Apple might be number two. Understand that. On top of that, Hindu people revere monkey and banana and so on. It, and that is an Anglo-Saxon thing utilized to ridicule black and brown people. Indian is brown people, all are we black. But no, big noise, but silence. Only two black brothers, Ayogore Ome and David Muhammad, chastised Rowley for the most disgusting statement in history. Woman challenges ban on open park cremations for COVID victims. Right? Kyle Taklal saying, well done. Because we had to go to the courts. Because remember I told you all, what is this? What is the science of this COVID-19? No open pyre. No, no cremations. The Hindu religion believes that you must separate the spirit and the body at the time of death in order to have eternal peace in order to live to move to the next realm well a lady's challenging it Kyle Taklal Singh was fighting the case but on top of that case adjourned till November 15th I don't know what country are we living in this is a, 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 a daughter trying to bury her father properly a dead human being a citizen is dead you mean our system just there is no rapid response there's no quick up the pace there's no instant justice there's no decision quickly the family of a 77 year old man who died from covid 19 last month may have to wait until sometime at the end of this year to carry out his final rights wow we're taking a little break i'm gonna drink some water when we come back i want you all to think don't go nowhere no, and share the life please I want you all to think about what you would consider somebody of good character, somebody, the decision-making process of a human being. Forget politics, forget government, just the thought processes of a good human being. Because in Trinidad and Tobago, we have many good human beings. When it's flood, you see them boys who put boat and went and saved people, people sharing, people giving out hampers, business places that not making profit, still trying to share their stock. Trinbegonians take care of each other. So we are very good people. So put on your good person thinking hat now. I'm going to ask you all a little question. When we come back, let me sip a little water. Because dealing with this PNM, oh, you need agua mineral. We're coming back. I'm a proud black man in this country, and you have offended me. I know what the yellow bananas mean. It's monkey that has created banana. Black people hungry, in Trinidad and Tobago, and you feed the monkeys banana. You could go to hell with that. We are better than that in Trinidad and Tobago. If you were eating two bananas, you might try to eat one for some good reason. Either to make it last longer, or to share it with somebody else. I'm a proud black man in this country and you have offended me. I'm a proud black man in this country and you have offended me. Come back now. I just want to put this lightly for you. If someone makes a request of somebody else to help you, your family, your club, your community, your village, your country, anything, and you are the boss, but somebody assisted, and while they assisted you. They made the initial contact and so on. And then, well, that had to come through you. Whether you're in your business, 
sports club, charity club, rotary club, whatever it is. When the good deed comes, wouldn't, would you not say thank you to Fred or Suzanne or Sharon? Wouldn't you say that? Isn't that normal? Isn't that courteous? Isn't that just how we are? Well, let me read something for you. We got 82,030 vaccinations for 41,015 people from Canada. Thank you, Canada. And I'm reading a, a press release from the Minister of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs, Amory Brown. And Amory Brown decides in his press release about getting vaccines and we're in such a vaccine deficit, it's not funny. Amory Brown says from the Ministry of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs, they announced a donation in a release yesterday saying the gift came as a result of advocacy by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley via direct correspondence to Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau earlier this year and subsequent to consistent diplomacy and dialogue between Brown, his Canadian counterpart, Minister Mark Garneau, and the High Commissioner of Canada to Trinidad and Tobago, Kumar Gupta. Okay. Let's pretend for a moment that every word that Amory Brown said in this press release is true but that there was also an intervention on July 5th from a pundit in Brampton, Ontario to the Canadians out there. Why, why is it so difficult? Why is it so hard for Amory Brown and the PNM to also say we thank pundit Vijay Pursat Sitahan? Why? I'm not understanding. Because these are life-saving vaccines. Nobody really cares who brought it and who ain't bring it. We just need it. We need plenty more. The government has failed. The government is in charge of bringing, as Champa said, the government in charge, the PNM in charge, bring vaccine. But for a minister to sit down and pen a press release on the receipt of a gift to thank the Prime Minister without providing any letter or anything. We never heard about this before. Eh? In all them press conferences, every day, every buff, two hour, buff, two, three hour, buff, we never heard nothing about Canada and donation. Eh? Go back and check. Nothing. But all of a sudden, Minister Amory Brown decides that it's so important to tell the country that Rowley was having some discussions with Trudeau. And he did follow up with them. So important. Really? Now I ask you all to think what you would do. Because you who are listening, you're good people. Would you have a problem saying, well, boy, a citizen in, in, outside, thank you. Oh, Lord, your help. Bring you, you help we. Thank you. Night. Why would it be a problem to say thank you? Or to mention if all of this was true. And all they watch my face. <laughs> right? Because they, all they know what the PNMs do. And each one of them learns to lie just like Rowley. He has a cabinet of baby liars just coming out. Like, you know, when it was gremlins and you wet the gremlin, you see little moth balls coming out, little balls of fuzz, and then more gremlins come out. The king liar, as you wet he back in the cabinet, poof, 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 liars, 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 all around. Now, run a little video there for my Vishnu to see. And I can't even believe this is so infradig to be actually going through this. It because it's so classless. The PNM is classless. They have no courtesy. They have no brought up. See, it's so disgusting and dishonest. And so infradic. But I have to clear the record. So I had to bite my tongue and do it. 
Only run the video, please. Facebook post, Foreign and Caricom Affairs Minister Dr. Amory Brown announced that at 3.33 p.m. on Thursday, 82,030 doses of the World Health Organization or WHO-approved AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine arrived in Trinidad and Tobago, generously donated by the Government of Canada. In a statement on Wednesday, the Foreign and Caricom Affairs Ministry said the vaccine donation from Canada is subsequent to advocacy engaged by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley via direct correspondence to Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau earlier this year. The ministry said it was also subsequent to consistent diplomacy and dialogue between Foreign and Caricom Affairs Minister Brown, his Canadian counterpart Minister Mark Garneau, and the High Commissioner of Canada to Trinidad and Tobago, Kumar Gupta. The statement also said Foreign and Caricom Affairs Minister Brown expressed the sincere gratitude of the government and people of Trinidad and Tobago to the government and people of Canada while noting this marks the first occasion that Canada has shared COVID-19 vaccines directly with any nation outside of its prior sharing via COVAX. Now put up that big. I don't want to see me. I want to read this. Because Amory Brown took it upon himself to put pen to paper, to write all that nonsense that you heard Joel Brown reporting on, come across and start from the beginning. Yeah, go across more. Go across more. Right, keep coming. Okay. Mr. Vijay Pursad Sitahal. S Vijay Pursad Sitahal. SKDS Hindu Temple, 117 Centre Street South, Brampton, Ontario, July 15, 2021. Dear Honourable Minister, this is to the Office of the Honourable Karina Gould, PCMP International uh, Development, House of Commons, Wellington Street. Re vaccine allocation. On behalf of the SKDS Hindu Temple and the Trinidadian Community of Canada, I am humbly writing and pleading to ask you and the Government of Canada to please add Trinidad and Tobago to the COVID vaccine donation list. We in Canada are multicultural society, etc., etc. July 15, 2021, from Pundit Vijay Pasad Sitahal, a Trinib Trinbegonian out there. Please put up the next one now and blow it up big. And that letter was to the Honorable Karina Gould. And the Honorable Karina Gould responded to Vijay Persad Sitahal, SKDS Hindu Temple, and so on. Put it up bigger so I could see it, please. All right, testing my eyes. Thank you for your letter of June 25, 2021, the, to the Honorable Anita Anand, Minister of Public Services and Procurement in which you request that the Government of Canada donate to COVID-19 vaccines to Trinidad and Tobago. We have carefully reviewed the matter you have raised. You have raised, meaning Vijay Pasad Sita has, and have determined that it falls under the mandate of Global Affairs Canada. Therefore, we have taken the liberty of forwarding a copy of your letter to the Office of the Honorable Karina Gould, Minister of International Development, for consideration. We hope this information will be helpful. CC, Office of Honorable Karina Gould, PCMP, Minister of International Development. Pull it back now, please. Is it necessary, PNM? Y'all, do y'all sleep at night? What, what, what? Your mother didn't bring all y'all properly. What's the big deal? What's the big deal? And you're saying it's the first country to get because Canada? Yes, because a Trini in Canada. God bless his soul. Vijay Persad Sitar head of the SKDS Hindu temple, wrote, requested assistance for his people in Trinidad and Tobago, and you all, the PNM is unable to say, well, thanks for the intervention from Mr. Sitahal of the SKDS temple in Canada, and we 
the government of Canada made contact with the Ministry of, Car of Foreign Affairs and CARICOM Affairs and we did the necessary, we expedited and we got these vaccines. The vaccines had to come through the government. Why you all have to, what, what is so sick in you all? What? You think that what? what we, 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 we go say, um, what we will say? What the people go say? And not understanding in a COVID-19 fight that requires trust. All it is life for everything. Anyway, I would like to thank Pundit Vijay Posad Sitahara. I have no idea who you are. I never met you. All I know is that you are a Trini and you have we at heart. Thank you very much for requesting doses for us. And anybody else outside there who could get we a million doses of Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson, Johnson, and all of that so that we could jab up quick and get herd immunity, please help. Because we are in a total, complete mess. My goodness, Amory Brown, you sick fellow. Wow. And just to let you know, Guardian, Thursday, August 5th, 2021. Canada donating 82,000 AstraZeneca jabs to Trinidad and Tobago. Canada's Minister of International Development, Karina Gould, yesterday announced that the government of Canada will share over 82,000 doses of AstraZeneca vaccine to Trinidad and Tobago via a bilateral agreement. Gould explained that TNT was selected to receive the doses based on need and the country's capacity to deploy them immediately, minimizing wasted and maximizing the public health impact. Very good. So thank you to Canada, thank you to Pundit Sital, thank you. We get vaccine, what they can go and take? My goodness. They are saying young people need to step up. Terence Dial Singh has sounded another alarm bell over the slow rate of COVID-19 vaccinations in Trinidad and Tobago. Really? You now ringing a bell? What about the slow rate of procurement of vaccination? What about the slow rate of selection of va vaccination? What about the slow rate of dissemination of vaccination? What about the slow rate of the education program on vaccination? What about the slow dissemination of information about the efficacy of the vaccinations, about the health effects, about the, the way the vaccines work, about the pamphlets, the essays, the documentaries? What about that? No communication Number strategy for 11 months. But we Number are... One in the world run it number one in the yes, world yes we are number, number one in the one world in but 11,127 deaths number but we are one in the world no 232 cases yesterday seven deaths a hundred and something cases today with six deaths 13 deaths in two days and we are number one in the world we under soe state of emergency for 81 days and there were 822 deaths covid 19 related during that soe and we are what number one in the world no we on lockdown shut down and broke down economy shattered for 95 days 943 citizens dead of COVID-19 and we are number one in the world number one in the world we at eight months of vaccination and only at 13 percent fully vaccinated we are what number one in the world number one in the world 23 billion spent from the Heritage and Stabilization Fund on COVID-19 relief and nobody ain't get no relief. We are what? Number one in the world. Number one in the world. 44% of businesses will never open. Over 110,000 people lost jobs during COVID. 103,000 lost jobs before COVID. Economy in a mess, food prices going up. And when it rained, we drown. But we are? Number one in the world number one in the world we on total lockdown we're supposed to buy you some time to get vaccination and put your things in place and every time we go in the eight the icu we dead we mortality rate we don't even know what's going on but under the lockdown 28 
2,264 positive cases and Brazilian variant, 90% of those because of porous borders. But what are we? Number one in the world. Number one in the world. Under state of emergency, they're now talking about Delta variant must come, it must come, it, we can't help it, it's inevitable. But yet you lock out people from their own country since March 22nd, 2020, and the Brazilian variant coming. Now they say Delta coming because they open the border, not because of the porous border. It are two boats that they bring down here, they cut ribbon and thing and no diesel, it air float nowhere yet. No helicopter, no radar, illegal immigrants starting to come back with Delta variant. But we are... Number one in the world. Number one in the world. Well, you go ahead with that, eh? And you all voted. Enough of you all voted in marginals. All Kamala Prasad be says a loss an election and her cabinet and intelligent people from running this country and helping helping people who are needy, not greedy, and putting things in place with real doctors, with real people who would have put and fought and kept the borders closed and gotten vaccination. We would have had two million dose, everybody that get vaccinated long time of different varieties, not this take where you get, we get because we wait for because we want to take a, a borrow. We want to borrow from China and part of that borrow, we have to wait for WHO so while we waiting all you're dead because all you ain't get vaccination but now that we have the, the CIO come and take and everybody saying if you don't take you go dead so what about all the time that was wasted every day that was wasted every death that we died who is to blame for that where's the commission of inquiry into all of those deaths what who where's the criminal negligence number when you one talk, in yes, the world we number, number one, one in the world, in the world. We are number one in the world because all we just do is number two when it comes to election. But in Tobago, they have doctors in Tobago. Let's hear what Dr. Tiffany Hoyt had to say. Dr. Tiffany Hoyt in Tobago, talk to the Dogla. Let me hear you. In January 2021, there were 10 positive COVID-19 cases in Tobago. In February, there were three. In March, there were 14, and in April, the number of cases shot up to 73. When we saw 317 cases in the month of May, we were very much suspicious that more than likely the variant had started circulating in Tobago. Then we saw 322 cases in the month of June, and for July, we reported a total of 610 cases. You would note that the total here only goes up to 13, 1,349, because it doesn't include August. So this is up to the 31st of July. Dr. Hoyt gave a breakdown of the increase in COVID-19 cases in Tobago from January to July and an analysis of COVID-19 deaths between 2020 and 2021. At the end of 2020, Tobago recorded two deaths, one in March and one in September. In 2021, no COVID-19 deaths were recorded in Tobago from January through April. In May, we reported a total of 11 deaths. In June, we also reported 11 deaths. And for the month of July, we reported a total of 19 deaths. Now, I just want to make the comparison here to show that as the number of cases increases, we would expect that the number of deaths would also increase. In June, when we had 322 new cases recorded, we had 11 deaths. And in July, when we had 610 new cases reported, we had 19 deaths. Active COVID-19 cases are also on the rise. When we look at the active cases per day, we realize that there's definitely been a sharp rise and it's continuing to rise in terms of the number of active cases. Today's revelation of increased COVID-19 cases comes as two elderly persons, both 71-year-old, one male and one female with comorbidities succumbed to COVID-19. In the TRHA's latest report, Total COVID-19 deaths have increased to 48. There are 37 new cases and 447 active cases. And Rowley going across to Tobago with the Minister of Makeup. 
to have let Wasa fix pothole. But all of that science that you heard there, you know what was the one thing that occurred that caused that entire spike? That entire spike in pristine Tobago, Tobago that was pure and clean and COVID free and ready to open in the bubble with Barbados and British Virgin Islands and Virgin Islands and Grenada and so on and operate and help Coco Reef stay open and all the businesses function and Tobago could have been in a pristine bubble if they had management in the central government that had a brain. You know what was the one thing that caused all that bacchanal death and chaos in Tobago? All you want to know? Run it. Next week, the end of next week, we move into Easter. And of course, this is not, this is not an Easter. That the story is going to be the fairy, the fairy, the fairy, the fairy. This is going to be an Easter where anybody who wants to go to Tobago can go and come back when you want. So you know what's happening now? Tobago is almost full and overflowing. The place to be Just is in Tobago. The place to be is in Tobago. There is nothing worse than a leader who does not respect the place of his birth, the place where his mother and father live. The man who has brought more pain, disrespect, and devastation to Tobago claims to be a Tobagonian from Mason Hall by way of Lake Oto. The man has no shame. It's a total disgrace. And now going across there to tell you while the PNM is running roughshod over Tobago for the last eight months after it has been six all, they're running like they have a chief secretary and they're going and look for budget and they're doing what they want and setting up committees and running and spending money how they want. They tell the EBC that Tobago must be divided in 15 seats. Then they tell you, we give you a, a bill in the hand is, is better than one in the bush. Who want to go and look for a bill about Tobago self-governance in the bush? Eh, Shampa Kujo? And now this man instructs the EBC to have 15 seats to call election. And them coming to Mama Gaia with pothole when he brought COVID-19, Brazilian variant and all. 50,000 people to flood and nasty up and put disease all over Tobago. That Rowley coming to tell Tobogonian. To vote for he? Well, let me tell you, I'm a half to Burgundian. And I could tell all you what's going to take place in day. And it's very good. And when he get the 15-0, when he get it, God will smile on Trinidad and Tobago. Because this cannot be right. It says pure, unadulterated wickedness. And on top of that, Rowley keeps telling untruths. Rowley come last week to give you a set of arithmetic about this and we only have this much more to go to herd immunity. Now simple arithmetic would say if we reach 13% fully vaccinated, we have 62% to go. If 62% of 1 million that we're going at, 62% is 620,000 people. Simple mathematics that we short. And we need to get them up there to herd immunity. Rowley come with some fancy mathematics. All you remind the people of the mathematics, the arithmetic, the Rowley-matic. Run it there. If we do a little arithmetic, if we say that we have vaccines for 600,000 people, and very many people are out there either knowing or asymptomatic, asymptomatically not knowing that they have COVID, but they have COVID among them in the population, a certain amount of Im natural immunity is taking place in the population. Persons who have it get over, didn't even know they had it. But if you check them, you'll find that the body would have developed some immunity to a, a virus that they didn't even know they had. And a rough estimate of that happening without any intervention is approximately, let's say, and for, for, for the, mathematics, the mathematics that we're going to work, up, let's say approximately 200,000 people in the population of 1.4 million have in fact or are in fact 
immunizing themselves naturally, not needing a vaccine. So we add that to the 600,000 that we have. So therefore we cater for 800,000 people. Still means that we have another 600,000 to deal with. And if we take out 400,000 from that 600,000 as under 18 children and up to 18 who are not to be vaccinated, then we're looking at approximately another 200,000 people who are not covered by not being young or not self-immunized or not vaccinated. <laughs> you know, that man right down there, eh? that man looking down at the summit. <laughs> Oh Lord, that man right on that nonsense, you know. Let me just tell all you, after all of that, if all you could understand all the algebra, epidemiologists, only 13, this is Wednesday, August 4, 2021, 2021. Express, epidemiologists, only 13% of population is vaccinated by Renuka Singh. A vast majority of the population is still not vaccinated and as such there are no plans yet on how the country would handle a further reopening. Epidemiologist Dr. De Avery Hines made a comment yesterday during the Ministry of Health COVID-19 update when he asked about when he was asked about more sectors of the country would be reopened. He said it was much too soon to be thinking about that. We are in a population where we still have the vast majority not yet vaccinated. We have 13% of the population overall that have full vaccination, he said. This is August 4th, 20, Wednesday, in the Guardian, page 6, Avery Hines, who is not known as a balanced, impartial. He, we still asking he if he got a scholarship fund from Joe Newt Williams. He's the one who make excuse about where well, yes is Easter is when they went 50,000 people went over died the spike. Oh God, oh Lord. Die Rowley who said that okay, um, nah, nah, it's not really that spike. It's the candle. All you light the candle that heat up the COVID and make it jump. That is the man. That is the man. But he said we reached 13% fully vaccinated. We had to reach 75%. Rowley and arithmetic come to tell all you, but hey, we naturally outside asymptomatic. If you was COVID positive, you don't have to take no vaccine. You naturally, you natural immunization. All kind of nonsense. The Ministry of Health, Convent Girl, and this one, and Dablin Thomas and them come out today. No, no, no. Um, forget Rowley, eh? Well, they didn't put that, but they said, whether you had it or not, you must get vaccinated. You have to get vaccinated. Whether you had it or not is irrelevant. The Ministry of Health under Rowley come to say that all what Rowley says is nonsense, dotishness, ignore him. And that is the Prime Minister all you vote for, all you want to say. Engage vaccine hesitancy, says the Express. Anyone who has ever tried to convince another would know there's a limit to argument, both sarcasm and repetition, even enticement, pizza, pizza. The Express says, there is no denying that the fact that numbers are substantially down in vaccination from roughly two weeks ago. If the vaccine in Trinidad and Tobago is way out of the pandemic, then it is pointless to keep pushing hard against the closed door of vaccine hesitancy. Energies would be much better used in trying to find the key to open it. So the Express now is attacking Rowley's position because Rowley's already coming and buffing, buffing, take that, do this, vaccine it, operate, do this, do this, blah, blah, blah. The Express saying, but that is myopic, stupid, arrogant, and dotish, and goes nowhere that we need education, information, cajoling, requests, and, and, and information that is scientific. So the Express now is coming to the senses and realizing that Rowley's buff and arrogance is stupidity of the highest order. They said, in the absence of a scientific survey in which no one in the government seems to be interested, they now understand that no one in the government is interested in science and survey. Since the beginning of Dogla politics last year, I told you, we weren't testing. If you're not testing, there's no COVID. There's no data. We don't have a curve. What are you talking about flattening a curve? What number one in the world? The two oxygen 
Oxford fellas just read two pieces of paper and them say that we good because them read nice words. Didn't you, wasn't I telling you that? The Express now in August 2021 is agreeing with the Dogla, agreeing with the UNC, agreeing with us that the COVID-19 response under Rowley has been abysmal and continues so to be. They said, we urge the ministry and others to treat the public's concerns as valid. That is Rowley they're talking to. Treat the people's concerns and information, educate, spend money on a communication strategy. Don't come there and play a buffing and lying with arithmetic that only you could understand while looking down at what you write down there. We urge the ministry to address the with information and honesty. The Express and all know Rowley and them lying. Let me read that again for you. The Express has woken up. Hear them. We urge the ministry and others to treat the public's concerns as valid and address them with information and honesty. The Express telling Rowley and stop lying. Despite the ministry's attempt to establish itself as the only credible source of information, let's go to the Guardian of Rowley's k -Pax. Now is not the time for fear, says the Guardian, page 12, Thursday, August 5th. This is why we are so pleased that the ERHA did not just go, because the ERHA that they say is a good functioning uh, health authority, that they went out in the country to vaccinate people house to house. So the Guardian was impressed with that. This is why we're so pleased that the ERHA did not just go into Matlock and seek to vaccinate the residents, but that the medical professionals also took the opportunity to hold impromptu discussion, discussions with the villagers so they too could understand the vaccines and be more assured that the decision they are making for themselves and their loved ones is a safe and worth doing. Now this is the Guardian's way of saying, Rowley, Everything you have done with this vaccination program, the lack of vaccines, the lack of education, the lack of a communication strategy, the lack of information, your everyday blame, 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 your buffing, shouting, and punishing does not work. But they can't say that. They say the ERHA, that's an organ of the PNM, eh? but them has some bright people. They are educating, discussing, talking going to the people encouraging them to get vaccinated through information while rowley comes every day to boof you and tit and threaten you and tell you vaccinate to operate this that that we coming down with 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 mandatory mandatory all kind of thing so this is how the guardian writes an editorial by not but don't mention rowley don't mention convent girl don't mention davlin thomas don't mention pnm but we know it's the PNM. The PNM in charge, Shampa says so. The PNM in charge and doing nonsense. And we are dying and we are not number one in the world. I go on. 